Hi, this is Alan Buckley. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a Flask Blueprint. Flask is a micro application web framework for Python. And the Blueprint feature is a object that allows you to break your website into modules. There are times when your application starts to grow, it gets larger and larger, and you may have a new section to add, like a backend admin portal. And what Flask will allow you to do is it will allow you to create a new directory with its own static files and its own routes just for this admin section. It helps keep your website clean and organized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by creating a generic Flask application just so you can see how one is typically set up. And then I will go ahead and create a blueprint section. This is the Hello World example that you'll find on the Flask website. Let me just start the server up and open my browser to make sure that we have everything running correctly. Looks like I'm using port 5000. And as you can see, Hello World is displayed, so the server is up and running. So the next step I want to do is I want to create a HTML file and return that. I'm going to start off by creating two directories the static directory and the templates directory and Flask by convention will automatically look for the static directory and templates directory unless otherwise configured. The static directory is where you would typically put your CSS files, your JavaScript files, your image files. The templates directory is where you would put any HTML file that you would want the Jinja 2 template engine to be able to get used in and you simply need to call a render template method to take advantage of that. And I'll show you that here shortly. Um, if you do want to specify another folder, say the static directory is going to be named content, you simply go up here and specify the static folder and you can do the same thing with the templates folder. But like I said, if nothing is configured, it will by default look for a static and templates directory. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new index.html file and what this file will do will simply say hey this is the time tracker homepage and I need to come back here and I need to import the render template method and instead of returning the hello world string I will now return render template with the name of the new HTML file I just created. I need to restart the server since I updated Python code. And when I come back to this localhost 5000, I refresh the page and the new index.html is returned. You can see a time tracker with the HT style. What I'm going to do next is include a new CSS file. I will put it in the static directory. I will call it site.css. Let's just update the H2 style. I'll update the color and make it red. And of course, we need to actually link to it. So I simply just type in link if I can type. And the type is text CSS. And now I'm going to take advantage of the template engine. This is the template bracket, so now I can use the URL4 method. The URL4 method is a Flask method that helps resolve your paths. I'm going to tell it to look in the static directory. I'm going to give it a name. It's site.css. That's what I want you to look for. And let's close this off. Now when I come back here and refresh the page, you can see that the style took. Let me just do one more thing here. Let me include a message. So we want to pass in a message. Simply go up here and define the message variable. Thanks for entering your time. And I'm going to say that the message is actually equal to message. Let's restart this. And now when we refresh the page, you can see that 
the Genji Two template in, took that string and displayed it on the HTML page. That's simple enough. So now we have a basic website set up. I have a static file, I have a templates file, and everything's up and running. Let's now add a new section of the site called admin, and this will have our admin portal in it. I'll create an admin directory, and in there, let's create the static and the templates directories, just like we did the root level. Let me expand this so you can see the project structure. And next, I will create a init file. It already exists because I'm not putting it in the admin directory. Okay, now it's in the admin directory. So I need to start off by importing the blueprint. And let's import render template because I know I'll need that. Next, I am going to create a method that will take in the app so we can register the blueprint to it. And let's configure that blueprint. I'm going to start off by creating the name of the blueprint. You can have multiple blueprints, so you have to assign it a name. And let's create the static URL path. Now, by default, it will use admin static, but I'm just going to include it to show you that you can change this. Um, it will use the blueprint name admin and then the static name. So you don't have to actually specify this unless you want to change it, but I'll specify it just so you guys can see. And let's do the static folder. Let's get that out of the way. Simply call it static and the templates folder. Simply call it templates. Make sure to include that S at the end. I've on more than one occasion just called it template and then my route doesn't load and I can't figure out why my HTML file isn't there and I'm just getting a 500 error so I had to go look back at my code oh I forgot the S so now we're gonna add a route typically you would add app that route but this time we want to assign the route to the blueprint so we'll call blueprint that route now this can be anything this variable is named so if this was blueprint 3 this would be blueprint 3 and we'll just say, hey, return the admin route. And we will use render template and return a admin.html file. So let's create that admin.html file. All right. And now we'll just make it clear that this is the admin portal. Great. So now we have a blueprint configured. We have a route added to that blueprint. Now we need to actually register it. Simply call register app.register blueprint. So we have that set up. Let's go back to the initial project init file and actually run that method. So let's import the admin directory or the admin module, excuse me, and then we'll call add routes and pass an app. Now let's restart the server and make sure that route is actually working. Let's refresh this page, make sure the first route we created is up and running, and it is, and now the admin portal is up and running. Let's go back to the init blueprint, and let's set up a new route. New route might be like register. Let's do admin slash register, and we'll define it as register, and we'll return a render template just like before with register HTML. And let's create that file, and we'll put it in templates directly. All right, and we'll make it clear that this is the register place page. Please. Register your rules. So let's restart the server and we'll try our new route. So that's up and running. Next, let's show you how to create a or link to a new CSS file. First, we got create it. Static. I'm in that CSS. Just so you know, it's getting the correct CSS file. 
We'll use a different color this time. I believe that's blue. And we'll go to the admin HTML page. Let's set up the style sheet. And it's going to drop to the next line so it's easier to see the href. I'm going to do the template brackets again. One small difference now when I set up URL4, instead of doing static like I did the first time, I'm going to initial, I'm going to put the blueprint name in front. So it's admin.static. Reason for this is it's going to know that look at the blueprint static directory, which is admin.static. If I just did static, it would look at the original static directory and it wouldn't be able to find your file. File name is admin.css. Let's save that and go back and see if that style took. And admin portal took the style, it's blue now. So that's up and running. Another thing we might want to set up is a link. So let's create an href down here. And what we're going to do is use the brackets and URL for to help us resolve the path again. And this time, instead of admin that's static, we're going to just say admin that register. And register is the name of the route right there. So that's what we're going to call. And let's close this out. Let's see, what is the issue? URL for? All right, forgot that. And now when we go back and refresh the page, should see a link. The link is not working, so let's see what the problem is. Oh, it's correct. There's no name in there. So we'll just simply say register. So now when you click on this, it will take you to the correct route, admin, register. So that's just a brief overview on how to set up a Blueprint. Thanks for watching this video. As you can see, Blueprint is pretty simple to set up and at the same time it's very powerful and it's configurable. It's a great way to organize your app and I absolutely love the Blueprint object that FOSS provides us. Uh, thank you for watching this video and I hope I have more to come.